folks. I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me today. It is Saturday, November 30th, 2024. Many of you that follow me will remember the report that I did about the earthquake there in Syria, Idlib. And the local people didn't know if it was, in fact, an earthquake or bombing from Russia against uh, different areas um, there in Syria. But Evidently, a civil war has broke out there in Syria, and Russia is currently bombing Syria as rebel forces have taken control of large areas amid a surprise attack. Syria's second largest city, Aleppo, has been taken by rebel forces despite Putin's effort to prop up President Bashar al-Assad regime. This here is an image of Assad's forces gathering on the southern side of Aleppo. Um, yeah, there's tanks and all kinds of artillery, things like that. Arabic news sources claim that Sunni Islamic insurgents had taken control of the city of Idlib. The report came just hours after parts of Syria's second largest city, Aleppo, reportedly fell into rebel hands for the first time in nine years. Here on X is the rebels at the Aleppo airport that evidently has also been taken by the rebels. The Syrian army said on Saturday today dozens of its soldiers had been killed in a major attack by rebels who swept into the city of Aleppo in the northwest forcing the army to redeploy in the biggest challenge of President Bashar al-Assad in years. The surprise attack led by the Islamics, Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, has jol jolted the front lines of the Syrian civil war that have largely been frozen since 2020. Renewed fighting in uh, Syria along the border with the uh, Turkish country. Syria's military said jihadists had entered large parts of Aleppo and dozens of so soldiers had been killed or injured in the fighting. Here's another video. It says SDF takes control of Sheikh Najjar Industrial City and Aleppo International Airport following SAA withdrawal. Islamic rebels topple a statue of Bashar al-Assad's brother as they storm Aleppo. The events on Aleppo followed a shock offensive launched by insurgents on Wednesday as thousands of fighters swept through villages and towns in Syria's northwestern countryside. Residents fled neighborhoods on the city's edge because of the missiles and gunfire, according to witnesses in Aleppo. SOHR, which monitors the country's unresolved civil war, said dozens of fighters from both sides were killed. The, the attack just means more wars there in the Middle East. They're already experiencing multiple wars in Gaza and Lebanon involving Israel and other conflicts, including the Syrian civil war that began in 2011. The army said bombardment had stopped the insurgents from establishing fixed positions. It promised to expel them and restore the control of the state over the entire city and its countryside. Two rebel sources said the insurgents had also captured the city of Marat al Nuram in Idlib province, bringing all of that province under their control in what would be another significant blow to Assad. Here's another post on X. It says Syrian government forces announced their retreat from Aleppo to prepare for counter offensive. Russia media reports. Uh, reportedly, the Syrian Arab army released a statement about a temporary withdrawal of troops in order to regroup ahead of reinforcements arriving to what initiate the counterattack. The Syrian military also reported that dozens of servicemen were killed in a rebel attack in the northwest of the country. They also confirmed that the rebels had managed to infiltrate most of the city of Aleppo. This is the first confirmation from Assad forces about the surprise rebel attack on Aleppo since it began on November 27th. Aleppo has not been attacked by opposition forces since they were ousted from eastern neighborhoods in 2016, 
following a grueling military campaign in which the Syrian government forces were backed by Russia, Iran, and its allied groups. But this time there was no sign of a significant pushback from government forces or their allies, which is rather surprising. Islamic rebels have reportedly taken control of a second major city in Syria, despite Russia launching air raids to support the regime of Putin's ally Bashar al-Assad. Two Syrian military sources said Russia had promised Damascus extra military aid, and it would start arriving in the next 72 hours. Authorities close to Aleppo airport and roads to the city, the two military sources and a third army source said, the Syrian army has been told to follow safe withdrawal, so they're retreating uh, from the main areas of the city that the rebels had entered, and that was confirmed by three military sources, supposedly. Rebels, including factions backed by Turkey, said on Friday their fighters were sweeping through various Aleppo neighborhoods. Mustafa um, Abula Jabber, a commander in the uh, Jesh, uh, I'm not going to even try and pronounce it, I just butcher the name. Iran allies in the region have suffered a series of blows at the hands of Israel as the Gaza war has expanded through the Middle East. Iranian foreign minister said in a phone call with his Syrian counterpart on Friday, they accused the United States and Israel of being behind the insurgent attack. Yeah, I had also heard that um, the CIA um, was behind this and yeah, started all this. The opposition fighters have said the campaign was in response to stepped-up airstrikes in recent weeks against civilians by the Russians and Syrian air forces on areas of Idlib province and to prevent any attacks by the Syrian army. Yeah, uh, that goes back to the report about the earthquake and how the civilians there didn't know if, in fact, it was an earthquake or what if it was a bombing by Russia. Opposition sources in touch with Turkey intelligence said Turkey, which supports the rebels, had given the green light to the offensive. Turkish officials were not immediately available to comment today, Saturday. Turkey, Turkey foreign minister said on Friday that the clashes between the rebels and the government forces had resulted in an undesirable escalation of tensions. Originally, rebels were driven out of Aleppo in 2016, uh, but more recently, reports emerged of the government forces retreating away in the face of the advances. An insurgent posting messages on social media calling on troops to surrender. On Friday, the Kremlin said that it considered the attack an encroachment on Syria's sovereignty and that it supported the quickest possible establishment of constitutional order in the region. So here we have a map of Syria and the area of Aleppo, Iraq, Lebanon, which has got fighting. The Russian spokesman said, of course, this is a violation of Syria's sovereignty in this region. Russian President Spokesperson Dmitry Peskov told a, pre a press briefing, Russia's military said it had bombed extremist forces, according to the Russian news agency. Syrian and Russian planes carried out 23 airstrikes near Idlib on Friday, according to SOHR. The UK-based monitoring group, which uses a network of sources on the ground in Syria, said four civilians were killed and 19 others were injured in the Russian strikes. Syria's primary source of uh, power is derived from local oil supplies and domestic natural gas reserves, which are becoming an increasingly important resource as well. But there was two different posts that I seen. Here's one. Turkey's foreign ministry 
stated that Turkish authorities have nothing to do with the fighting between the Syrian army and anti-government forces in the Syrian province of Idlib and Aleppo, but assured that the country will take necessary precautions against a potential migration wave. Then there was this other analysis, which I thought was really um, interesting. Apart from the gloom and regret that Wagner and um, Pergoshan are no longer around, Russians say that, in essence, the situation has returned to what it was like in 2015 since the entry of Russian troops into Syria. The Russian claims that one of the main reasons Russia intervened in Syria was the issue of the Turk stream and Turkey's refusal of Russia's proposed four-pipeline format. With 15 billion cubic meter per year for each pipe, the Turks insisted on two pipes, one for transit and the other for the Turkish market, with a 10% discount. Russia disagreed, and the war in Syria began. Russians note that the sadness that the Turks did not allow Gazpan to implement its version of Turk Stream, and in 2018, the two pipe sections of the stream were utilized. Russia perceived this as a capitalization and a defeat. Now Russia is facing the closure of the Ukrainian transit uh, starting January 1st. Russia will lose 15 billion cubic meters of exports and will be left with only one pipeline of Turkish stream. Gaspon claims it has already prepared for the cessation of gas transit through Ukraine and that everything is stable. In reality, Gaspon's stock prices have fallen and will continue to decline. Yeah, I heard their ruble in inflation there in Russia is outrageous. Unlike gas prices for ordinary Russians, amid the devastation of the ruble, Gaspon, which was once repeatedly called Russian's national treasure, is gradually heading towards bankruptcy. Russian public forums state that the Turkey Stream 2 project has come to a halt to Turkey's extraordinary uh, conditions. A one-year payment delay for already delivered gas, a 25% discount on all volumes, and the transfer of all gas at the border to Turkey's ownership, with Turkey wanting to sell the gas independently without Gazpon. In other words, Gazpon will have no European exports left, and Turkey wants to take all it has. Based on the situation in Syria, it seems that Turkey will be able to impose even tougher conditions on Russia and start bargaining. Gas is unlikely to be the only negotiable tr uh, chip, but it's quite important. So what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, so anyways, yep, wars and rumors of war continuing throughout the world. You know, what next? Taiwan, North Korea attacking South Korea? Yeah, that'll probably happen too. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. If you wish to watch me on Patreon, you can join me there. You can watch all the videos there for free. Now, please support my work on Patreon. Thank you again. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.